All right, friends, <clears throat> we are going to get started. So welcome to Michael's Kids Club. This is our summer camp edition where we are coming to you every day at three o'clock. And today is Saturday. We thank you for joining us. So as a reminder, if you want to share the craft that you did today or anything that you've done previously this week, you can always tag us on social media using hashtag make it with Michaels. We would love to see what you're making. So it's Saturday, so we made it tie-dye day. My name's Catherine. This is my daughter, Bellamy. She is six years old, going to be in first grade. Um, so if any of you have littles out there crafting, this is totally an age-appropriate craft. I believe all of our crafts are engineered for ages three and up. Today, we are gonna need a little bit of parents' help with some scissors and some paint. Um, we will go through the supplies in just a minute and we'll give you some alternate supplies in case you don't have paint available today. But this is our self-portrait class. So we're gonna spend some time today painting a frame together and then we're gonna make a portrait. So my pre-work here is actually of our dog. Bellamy drew it this morning. Her name is, what's Navy. your dog's name? Navy. Our dog's name is Navy. So I made a blue ombre frame and Bellamy drew a picture of Navy and we put it in our frame. So this is what you're going to be making today. But it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be a dog. It can be a portrait of yourself, which is what she and I will do alongside you. I'm just making me and my brother and the whole entire family. She's going to draw her, her brother, and the whole fam. Um, I'll do a portrait of either myself or Bellamy here, but feel free to go ahead and start thinking about who you're going to draw. The first thing we'll do is actually paint the frame. But before we get started, we want to make sure to tell you a couple things. One, the best way to communicate with us is through my friend, Raina. Hi, Raina. Hello. So she's here today to help us out. She is watching the Q&A. So that's where you're gonna get your questions answered. But if you think maybe someone already asked the question, you can check the answer tab and see if it's sitting there for you. Otherwise, ask away. Later, I would love to have you guys put in the Q&A what you're drawing. Um, whenever we're over here drawing, we'll all talk about it together. And I have some fun facts for you today about self-portraits but we'll get to that in a little bit. So before we start painting, I do want everyone to make sure they have the supplies that they need. So Bellamy, can you go through it one at a time for me? Okay, so if, does everyone have paint? You're gonna wanna start with paint. So what we're using today is Creatology acrylic paint. I would say just about any paint works. So finger paint, um, any kind of craft paint. I would not use watercolor and I'll tell you a backup. Easy peasy. Marker squeezy. <laughs> <laughs> easy peasy marker squeezy um, <laughs> markers so they color quite well on the frames that we're going to use today so if for some reason you don't have paint nearby or you'd rather use markers to make it dry faster or for um, younger kids out there these work really well and you can be um, a little more specific with your art with markers mm -hmm. okay what else do we need Bellamy and does everyone have water because we are going to need water for yeah to you... wash out our paint Definitely. So Bellamy and I are both using a couple of colors. She wants to make sure that you have a cup with some water. We find it helpful to have a plate for your paint and your paintbrushes, right? Yes. Does everyone have paintbrushes? All right. What else do they need? What else is in our tray? Eyeballs, unless if you need eyeballs for a making person. Yep. So that and you put eyeballs on your critter or your people. And you will need scissors to cut out the shape that inside your frame to put to frame your picture yeah and, and you need some glue yeah what else for the eyeball that's right and then inside your frame will and, be we'll and that. That comes with your frame. the back to keep it standing that comes with your frame and we need paper to draw it and we need we need a we need a right we need pencils <laughs> because we need to trace it to make sure it's perfect. That's right. And so then last but not least, you're going to want your unfinished frames. So this is the shape that I chose. This is the one that Bellamy chose. So this is what we're going to be painting today. Okay, that was a lot of supplies, you guys. So if you need a couple minutes, we'll take a breath. I can go through some alternates one more time. I'll also tell you that in the instructions, it mentioned glue and glitter. We kind of already know where in our house our frames are going, so we're not putting glitter on ours today, but you can absolutely pull out your glue, your glitter, 
Other alternatives, if you don't have paint or you want some more ideas, would be stickers, foam stickers, jewel sticker, all the kinds of stickers um, will stick quite well to this. You can also use glue to glue it down if you need to. Um, and so I think we've given you enough alternates. You don't need the wiggle eyes if you don't want them. You can draw your own portrait in any way you'd like. Um, you may want some markers or colored pencils for your portrait. We'll grab some here in just a second on our end too. So you really have to think through what you need to paint your frame and what you need to make your portrait on the inside. Did you have a question, Bellamy? And if you uh, want to make something a little fuzzy around it, you can use some pom-poms. Also true. Okay. So we do have oh, a question. Yeah. For um, what if they don't have a frame? Can they use something else to yes. frame their picture? Absolutely. I would recommend using a piece of paper. Um, you'll just want to make your cutout, decorate your frame, and then insert your picture on the inside. An easy way to do this is to take a piece of paper, fold it in half. So if you don't have a frame, now's the time to stop everything and catch what I'm saying here. Take a piece of paper, fold it in half. Then I would draw a big square, cut that square out, decorate the frame, draw your silhouette, your portrait on the inside, and when you close it, you'll have a framed photo. It's an easy way to do it with one piece of paper and some scissors, okay? So if you don't have a frame, paper will work. You can still stay along with us today and decorate, and then you'll have the whole inside here to do your self-portrait or a portrait of a loved one or a drawing or picture. Okay, great question. Anything else out there before we begin? Yeah, are popsicle sticks a good way to frame their picture? Love a popsicle stick. Just make sure you have glue or you have a parent there to help you with hot glue to get them glued together. Popsicle sticks, you might want to assemble those first while we're painting our um, frame. You're going to want to get that assembled. You can paint the popsicle sticks. Also, markers work great. Glitter, all of that stuff works wonderful too. Great idea. And what kind of paint? Is it watercolor, acrylic? What acrylic kind of paint, paint, paint works, paint? washable craft paint works, finger paint works. I would say no watercolor. It's not going to show up very well on here unless you're using a really dark color. Um, the water tends to absorb a lot. So if you can avoid watercolor, great. If you can't, you might really like the paper format I just showed um, because obviously your watercolor would be beautiful on paper. Awesome. Okay, so you can switch to the other camera if we're ready and then we're going to begin. Okay, friends, so this frame will stay here the whole time as a reminder of what we are trying to achieve. And then, like I said earlier, if you need anything, just give us a shout in the Q&A. So the first thing that you're going to do is take your frame and pop it over if you have our same frames or any other similar frame that you're trying to paint. Lift these little metal pieces up if you have the same frame as us and take this piece of paper out. Okay, we're going to paint it without the paper inside um, because while this dries, you're going to trace this for your size and draw your portrait. So I like to get it out before so I don't have really messy fingers while I am trying to make my portrait happen. So everyone go ahead and turn your frame over, pop your picture out and then turn it on the painting side. And then we're gonna start picking out some colors. So <laughs> similar to my example, I'm going to do blue. So I'm not sure how well you can tell, but I tried to make this kind of an ombre effect because I knew we were having tie dye Saturday over here. So that is what I'm going to do again. And I like this technique um, and I'll show you what, how I'm going to do it, but feel free to paint solid stripes, um, anything that you like. My daughter's going to attempt a little tie dye effect on her side. I would call this more ombre. So what I did earlier today was I took my um, Creatology paints and I picked a light blue, a white and a medium blue. I started with the white as a base then I blended with the light blue and then I blended the dark blue with the um, medium blue and it kind of allowed me to have the shade bands that you see here. So I'm going to do that on my side, but I'm not going to talk you through those details too many times because we want to have time to draw our portrait today. So once you feel like you have what you need and you're situated, the first thing I like to do is get a little bit of paint 
on my paint plate and get my brush out so that I'm organized. I'll tell you today I am using um, a Crayola brush. I like the flat tip. My daughter is also using Crayola and she likes the round tip. Um, I would say the bigger the brush, the more coverage, the faster it'll go. But my other tip with big brushes, and this is super important you guys, is to not use a ton of paint. You want to be light on the paint that gets on the brush. It'll dry so much faster and you'll have a completed project by the end of our video. So that's just a little tip that I like to follow. So if that works for you, um, feel free to pour on the light side whenever you are pouring your paint out. So I'm going to go ahead and get my daughter's paint poured for her first. You'll be able to see me here in the camera. So this is her color palette. Um, she's going to use teal, pink, and orange. Like I said, she's trying to go for a tie-dye effect today. So she did different colors where I'm using white and two shades of blue because I am going for kind of similar colors in an ombre effect. If you would like to tell us in the Q&A what your design vision is, I'd love to hear Raina chat some off to me. I'm excited to hear what everyone's theme will be today or different ways that they're going to embellish their frame while I pour paint, which is quite satisfying. Not sure if you guys find it that way, but I sure do. We've got oh. a starry night. Ooh, um, love this. Donna's going to be using a lot of pink colors. Yeah. We've got half purple and half teal, rainbow, blue, yellow, and white. Someone's going to try to do an ombre effect. Yes, I can. Someone's going to try to use markers. Um, someone is doing a pink frame with jewels and jeweled flowers. Love that. Ooh. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be excited. pretty swirls and rainbows. That's awesome. Red polka dots. Nice. I, liked Very the, 50s, I love it. I liked the sign up, had the polka dots with the glitter. I think that yes, is Yes, that's super cute. And I hope a bunch of you out there are using glitter. We okay. were, it was a tough call for us, but we decided... We were not going to add the glitter, but we, add, but we are adding the wiggle eyes, and we are excited to make a portrait. So um, as we get started, like I said, you just want to get good coverage on your frame. Another tip I'll give you from my exercise earlier today is I did try to paint the inside of this little edge. What I didn't get around to was painting the outside of the frame. Honestly, to give it a start, I would go this route. If you feel like you have a really good surface under you, you have you want to take the extra time to let it dry, then you could paint the outside. Um, but I don't feel like it needs it. So your call artistically, make this your own. Um, the other thing you could go back and do is put paint here and do glitter all around the outside, which is really what I'm kind of thinking of doing. So you would just lay down the glue here, sprinkle your glitter and get the whole edge. So I think that's what I might do later on this one. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple ideas on how to manage that step while we get started here. And then if you missed my PSA, I always feel like um, the less paint you get on your paintbrush, the better off you'll be because it's going to allow your craft to dry faster. Um, and you can have more control over the paint coverage and the coats. So I like to be in real control of how much color gets um, on the frame, like how dark it is or how light it is. And I think it really super helps to be light on the paint side of things. All right, so I'm slipping a piece of paper under mine because this morning when I did my frame, I was quite messy. <laughs> and then this one's going to show up really light, so you may not even be able to see it, but I am just doing my first coat in white. That's what I did down here earlier um, that helped me know um, where the light side of my ombre was. The other thing I'll tell you real quick before you get too far into it is if you have a vision for your total frame and you are using this um, unfinished craft frame from Michaels, it has a hole on a couple sides. Those are the bottom. There's no change in kind of where your bottom of your frame is. So make sure 
if you don't want this side to be the bottom before you get too far, you need to flip the perspective. Okay, guys. So just make sure if you have a vision for your art for only one side to be on the bottom, you catch that now. All right, so Bellamy's starting to paint hers and I'll check in and show you guys her sunburst here in a little bit. And then I am just putting on my first coat of white paint that I will blend into my blue in a little bit to make it more ombre. So I know it's hard to see, but I have about half the frame covered in white paint. So it kind of stops around there. Um, I would say to try to feather out the end of it as much as you can. It'll make for a smoother transition for your ombre. So then what I like to do is take the lightest color and mix it with the next color just so you have a little bit softer pull. And then we're also going to, um, this is where we're really going to start painting lightly so that you have control of the overlap and the way your ombre comes through. Okay. So I'm just going to start pulling through and then I just try to get a little bit on the white side again it's all about your artistic vision so kind of whatever you want aesthetically there is no wrong way to make this come to life and you guys there's no, right way. there's no right way either Bellamy likes to remind me when I say there's no wrong way that means there's also no right way boy is she right I love keeping an open mind when I'm doing crafts sometimes um what you kind of think is an accident turns out to be just a beautiful transition for something. Um, you can accidentally put together a color combination that you weren't planning on. So try to keep a really open mind when I'm doing my crafts and I hope you guys feel the same way. The other thing I'll tell you is I love doing this kind of painting where you can't really mess it up. <laughs> um, it's quite relaxing, definitely. Um, doesn't feel very stressful to me personally. I don't know about you guys, but I like, um, you know, when I can just kind of let my mind wander and do some painting and, and not have to be too terribly worried that um, there's a chance that I won't like the result. Because I think that with something like this, when you're doing light coats, you get the time to kind of go back and, and get it just how you want it. Um, it doesn't have to stress you out. So I hope you guys are enjoying getting your frames made. For those people using markers or paper, um, hopefully your progress is going well. Those are great ways to make a frame. And then like I said, in a few minutes, we'll focus on the self-portrait part of the class, uh, which I'm really excited to do with you all. All right, so as you can see, I went a little lighter this time versus this frame. I kind of like how it's turning out but the transitions are going really well. Raina, do we have anything from anyone out there? Everyone doing okay? Yeah, so um, how will they use the glitter with the paint? Wait for to dry and then grab some glue. Um, unless you're using glitter glue, of course, then you can just go right on top. <clears throat> but generally, I like to wait for it to dry and grab some, grab some glue. Uh, one of my favorite glues, which I talk about all the time, if you've been on um, Kids Club with me before, is Elmer's Craft Bond. It sticks really well to just about anything. So wood, fabric, um, pom-poms, glitter, of course, or I wouldn't be recommending it. So that's a real good one. Um, I like a lot of Elmer's products. The nice thing about glitter is it sticks pretty well, even with school glue. So don't be afraid to just grab what you have and give it a shot. I think part of the success metric there is really letting it dry, kind of keeping your hands off of it so that you don't mess with it. You don't want to loosen up those glitter sparkles before they're ready to set in. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'll show you Bellamy's here in a second, you guys. Hers is straight out really great. Good question about the glitter, you guys. Anything else you're thinking about, be sure to just pop on in the Q&A. Um, Raina's going to keep monitoring it for me. We've got some time here today to make this frame, make our portraits. We'll talk a little bit about portraits here in a minute. Yeah, you can use some of my dark blue. Can you, can you go one? over the substitutes for frames again? Yeah, definitely. Um, Things that I like to substitute if you do not have the frame, 
Um, someone brought up popsicle sticks earlier. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, not sure how I could forget about a popsicle stick because I use them all the time, but I did kind of forget that that's an option. So what you'll want to do is just go ahead and get those glued together. Um, if you have a parent nearby in a glue gun, that would be the fastest way, but if not, you can always glue them together. You'll have time to set them aside and you can even paint them later. You don't have to paint them um, while we're painting right now. And then the other option that I threw out there, which I really kind of think is cool, is um, <clears throat> taking a piece of paper and just folding it in half. So you'll just get a piece of paper, fold it in half, and then I would just draw on here a square on one side, open it up, cut the square out, and then you'll have a folded piece of paper. So mine's cut because I was going to use this later, but just folding one big piece of paper, um, you'll draw the portrait on the inside and then when you close it back up, you'll have a frame. You can always do that with them cut apart, no problem. I just think it's even simpler to keep it all one big piece of paper, but you can absolutely make a paper frame. Um, if you have a bunch of pom-poms like I do behind me, you could glue all those together on a piece of paper, make a pom-pom frame. You could even glue them on this wood and make a pom-pom frame. You don't have to paint the wood. You can sticker the wood, color the wood, pom-pom the wood, glitter the wood. Tons of options to get your creativity flowing. So I am pretty happy with where my frame is at. I am painting the inside edge I found that that made me feel like my frame was a little more finished. Same with me. Same with Bellamy. And I, and I did not bother with the outside edge, but you are welcome to do it whichever way you like. You can leave all the edges raw, you can paint all the edges. Um, you could come back later. I think you may have heard me. I really think I might glitter the edge here. I'm actually super excited about that idea. So um, I might do that later. You may want to do pom-poms around your edge later. Um, or right now, if you have all your crafts out and you're just ready to go for it. So lots of ideas for the edges. But like I said, don't feel pressured to finish the edges. They look quite nice um, in the unfinished color too. So totally up to you and what you want to achieve stylistically. All right. Raina, do we have people who are saying like, I'm already done painting. I'm ready to keep moving. <laughs> they are, at, they're telling me all these things that they're using to decorate their frames. So some are using beads, some are using permanent markers, um, feathers. Oh, I like some are, yeah, some are cutting out um, shapes from cardboard. Um, there's lots of, lots of creative people out there today. I love it. These are my weekend crafters. I think you guys might be the most creative. This is a bunch of great suggestions. So thank you all for being active participants and giving us your ideas and thoughts. I will say one of the fun things about teaching this class and any of our classes is getting to hear from you guys. Um, getting to hear what crafts you're doing or different ways that you think about the project and personalize it. That is uh, one of the things we love, love, love to hear. And I like to do the craft. Yes. I'm just focused on the craft, not about the question. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you're busy and you have mom to lead it over here, right? Mm -hmm. All right. That's why I bring my mom over here. That's every why day. you bring your mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. Okay, so I've got a pretty good setup going here. I got my ombre kind of washed look in light blue and white, very similar to the example. Wanted to show, kind of stay consistent for you guys today. And then um, in just a second, I'm going to show you Bellamy's. And then we will, in a, just under five minutes, move from painting to portraiting. So just so you can do a time check real quick. We will give you a few more minutes to paint and then I'm gonna move on to portraiting. If you are not quite ready, it's totally your call. You can keep painting and listen um, or you can move on to portraiting with us and finish painting later if you haven't quite completed what you wanna do. It's totally up to you. Um, the other great thing to know about the way that we do our classes is this will be ready for playback um, tomorrow on our website. So if you want to come back and listen to anything that we discussed today, whether it's painting tips, portrait tips, um, anything at all, really, you can catch it at another time. Or maybe you didn't have your supplies ready 
uh, you can definitely view this again. So the team will make sure to put both the project and the link to our classes in the Q&A so that you have access to everything. But since you found the class today, I bet you're already an expert. Just a guess. Okay, real quick before Bellamy finishes up, I'm gonna show you hers and let her keep painting. Wow. So she was very much inspired by our tie-dye t-shirts. That is the theme of today, right, Belle? Mm -hmm. Theme. Theme. <laughs> okay, so we'll give you, like I said, a few more minutes to keep painting um, and finishing up your frame. And then while we do that, um, I'm gonna start prepping just a couple things to get ready for our portraits so that I am right there with you when you are ready to move. Okay, friends? So Donna's daughter is going into first grade as well, and she wants to know if Felmy is excited for school. I am. What are you most excited about? See, meet, meeting my new teacher. Meeting your new teacher. I know, I wonder who it'll be. And meeting new friends and eating at new times and everything. <laughs> I love that, eating at new times. Donna's daughter, tell us what you're excited about. We want to hear, or anyone else for that matter. I know um, school might look really different for some of us this year, but there's always something to look forward to. So feel free to put it in the chat. Might just be getting to make a new backpack charm, which we will do not this coming Monday, but the next. Bellamy and I will be back for two more appearances with you guys. We're going to make a monster necklace this coming <laughs> Monday. And then the Monday after that, we're going to make a backpack charm. So talk about back to school. We're going to help you get ready. Yeah, we've got Jacqueline is doing virtual school with her mom. Um, I, I'm probably going to say this name really wrong, but Ira is going to kindergarten. Yay! Yeah, how exciting. They're asking um, what they need for their portrait. Yeah, so for your portrait, you need the pop-out that you had from your frame, a piece of paper. You're going to want to, first thing we're going to do, I'll just run you through their instructions, and then we'll do it together, because time is right, we're right on time. Um, we'll trace this, then we'll cut it out. And then we'll use the piece of paper that matches the inside of your frame to draw our portrait. So if you've already decided who you're going to draw, you can go ahead and take some of those steps while we take them on our side too. I have a question. Yeah. If, if, and Donna's daughter, Bethany, is excited. She gets to do new crafts and oh, help her brother do them too because he's going to be in kindergarten. Oh, perfect. What if it comes without a pop out? If it comes without a pop-out, that's a great question, Bellamy. You'll put a piece of paper underneath it and trace. It's a very similar process. Okay, friends, so we're ready to start over here. Oh, um, I need one more edge. Oh, we'll finish your edge, dear. I need to use one of those colors. It's okay. Which one? I haven't decided. Okay. Bellamy's going to finish an edge while I get our friends started. Let me clean up a brush for her. One second, friends. Um, but yeah, we are going to move on to the portrait part. So first thing you want to do is make sure paper is the right size. Welcome. And then cut it out. If you're having to cut, I'm having to cut. I'm having to trace and cut today. No big deal. Um, and then you can start drawing. And then I'll save my fun fact. I'm dying to tell you guys what I learned today, but I'm going to save it. Can I, I also have a good thing. Okay. Bellamy has a good thing. If you're an artist, you can draw whatever you want. That's right. That's the special thing about being an artist. Mm -hmm. Like I am a drawing princesses from my BFF Blakely. Got you. Bellamy does enjoy drawing princesses. I think my favorite thing to draw is letters for people's names. So here's the tracing, guys. I just took the inside of the frame, traced it on. This is actually cardstock. Um, it's probably about 100 pound cardstock from um, our paper, Recollections paper at Michael's, traced it, and then I'm gonna cut it out for Bellamy and myself real quick. I'm done, I'm done. Okay, so that we have something to draw our portraits on. All right, and then here is her heart. Do you want me to cut it? I want you to cut it. Okay, looks like I'll be cutting. Mine is perfect. Yes, yeah, scissor skills are important. I'm sure Donna knows that and her daughter. So we've been practicing cutting this summer. 
Um, I love doing crafts with kids, so I'm definitely look forward to doing more of these with you guys during the because school mom's year. Craft lady. <laughs> <laughs> look forward to doing more of these with you guys during the school year. We I have, know. we have another one on Monday, and yeah. the Monday after that, and the Monday after that. Okay. Every Monday this month. That's right. Um, yes, so at Michael's, we are excited to bring you this free programming um, over and over again. I'm not sure if any of you have had a chance to sign up for our most recent classes, but I'll tell you, definitely keep, not right now, definitely keep your eye on the website. Um, we put new classes up all the time. We've had some special ones with Crayola and Lynn Lilly of Craftbox Girls. We've had um, our friends at Lego do a craft with or, um, an instruction with us. Can We've I, had Elmer show us some interesting <laughs> things with glue and slime. Are we allowed to paint our frame? Can you draw? I mean, paint or picture. Can you draw and use color pencil? Um, and then our friends at Faber Castell have also can joined you, us. So Bellamy is going to go ahead and start drawing her <laughs> portrait with pencil and color pencil. And she told me earlier she's drawing herself and her brother. No, I'm not. Oh, changed our minds. What are we drawing Actually, now? Actually, I am. Okay, change our minds again. Mm -hmm. That's all right. So she is going to draw a picture and color it. So the fun fact I was going to tell you about portraits, guys, I was really curious, like, when was the first portrait ever recorded? Turns out... I, actually, does anybody know, like, don't cheat in Google, because I I already Googled for you, like, I got that part down. But did anybody have a guess at, like, how many years ago, or do you happen to know what year in particular? Because I'll tell you what I found, unless, Raina, anyone's jumping up with an answer. Um, not yet, okay. although it might just take them, someone says maybe, like, 100 years ago. Yeah, so that's what, I thought. that's what I thought. No joke. I thought it was like 17, 1800s. Guys, it was in the 1400s. 587 years ago, the first panel, and it didn't say if it was painting or not, so I don't even know what they would have used for their art medium 587 years ago, but the first panel was recorded of um, a man doing his own self-portrait and then a portrait of his wife. And so I just thought that was so interesting because I'm right with... Um, the person who chimed in first, like I thought it would have been within the last one to 200 years. You can color it first. And the other thing um, that I was trying to look up too, and I really couldn't find as many examples as I thought I was going to find, was um, how many, like what are the most like famous portraits? So if you guys can think of any of those, feel free to chime in. I'm still drawing a picture of our dog. You guys will find out very quickly that um, I am not a line artist. No. But I am here to do crafts. Not like me. <laughs> not like Bellamy. Bellamy's a line artist. But um, yeah, I was trying to figure out what are some really popular self-portraits in art history. And I didn't come back with a ton. Um, I would say Van Gogh. Not sure if anyone chimed in on that yet. We can all probably be like, oh, yeah, I can even think of what it looks like in my head, right? Uh, Frida Kahlo, it's another one. Um, she did a ton of portraits during a study that she did. But other than that, I didn't come back with a ton. So again, curious um, if you guys know of or think of any, because I was surprised that there were less out there than I thought. So maybe someone today is making a self-portrait and they will be like an incredible portrait artist one day. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone doing in the chat? They are doing good. They are asking lots of questions about um, when they when they draw their portrait, does it need to be the same size as the pop out? Or does it need to be bigger, smaller? Yeah, I would keep your paper the size of the pop out. Try to think about your frame, right? So your portrait, you might want to make it a little slimmer on the left, the right, top and bottom, right? So that your frame has room to shine. Shine. But other than that, you're going to want to be close. I'm basically making our dog into a person. I think she deserves it. So like Bellamy said, her name's Navy and she's very old. I 
lady. She's an old lady. <laughs> we love her so much. Old lady dog. Yeah, that's okay. It's a girl. <clears throat> and her name came after a store named Old Lady. No. <laughs> it's your daddy's favorite color. All right, keep coloring your portrait, and then you have to tell us all about your picture in a minute, little one. Mm, so if you're little sis, mid, big sis. That's mid, right. I um, said big sis, mid, sis. So if you're leaving um, room for wiggle eyes, you're gonna make a funny portrait. Either you're gonna include an eyeball or not. So your call. Um, I'm gonna add a wiggle eye, so I'm making a dog that doesn't have eyes. So it'll look weird for a minute, but we're gonna come back and give my dog some wiggle eyes here in just a bit. And the other thing, if you do finish early and you're like, huh, what can I do to enhance my picture? I have a couple ideas for you. One, you could cut around your outline and put it on a piece of construction paper and get a colored background or glitter paper, or stripe paper, or whatever. Or two, you can decorate your background, of course. That's what I'm gonna do. So just a couple ideas if you're thinking your portrait needs some extra pizzazz and you finish and you want to take a minute to pump it up a little bit. That's an idea that I had for you guys. Let's pump it up. Whatever you want it to be. Okay. All right. We're still coloring over here. Hopefully you guys are too. And then every once in a while, I'm kind of checking on my paint. I think we're pretty dry, so I don't know about you guys. Luckily, that unfinished wood seems to soak up paint pretty well, um, which helps us be able to see our creation in a frame in just a little bit. So this is the start of my dog. She's um, really dark black and brown, and her name's Navy, so I put a little blue collar on her, and I'm going to write her name on it in a minute. Coloring. Bellamy's almost done. Are you going to color your background or leave it like that? I'm going to make like a little disco ball. Okay, we're adding a disco ball. Disco ball. We are like full on happy Saturday over here. Ooh, the other fun thing to decorate with, you guys, I just saw these in my marker box, would be um, these stamp markers. So these they're happen to be Creatology. My kids love them. And they're really fun. Whoops. That they're little... really fun. Some of them come out. You can put them back in really easily though. Yes, but they will get all over your fingers. <laughs> and there's, and, and underneath. Yes, underneath and, they're an actual marker. Mm -hmm. So anyway, stamp marker might be another fun way to decorate your background. All right, just some ideas. I'm sure you guys have plenty of good ones. Y'all are always here for that. Okay, so. Christina wants us to know that her dog's name is Misty. Misty. I, I wonder love... if Christina's drawing her dog or not for her play. Bye, Miss. Yes, we love the name Misty. That's a good pet name. I'm giving my pet some polka dots in the background, and then I'm going to glue on the eyeballs. Hopefully everyone learned just a little bit about portraits today. I was very surprised by that fun fact, so thought I would share it with you all. Would also love to know if you've done a portrait at school of yourself. Oh, and I want to tell you about um, a really cool supply. So Crayola does colored pencils in um, flesh tones. And so actually happen to have some here. They um, are launching a whole new line um, this year called Colors of the World that has 24 specific tones. Um, that were developed no, that were developed with um, cosmetic manufacturers to make sure that they have really good solid representation across everyone. And the cool thing about colored pencils, markers, and crayons in flesh tones is if you don't find one that matches you, you can blend. Um, and so you can do highs and lows. They are all based on undertones and skin tones. And so we will have the crayons in store this fall and then we'll have the colored pencils and markers in store in January. They currently have a similar product out there right now. Um, so I just wanted to show you, these are the current ones. I don't, I'm 
I buy the stuff for Michaels and I don't even have the new ones yet. So don't think I, I got it like freebie over here. I purchased these um, with what they have out there currently, but I just wanted you guys to know that it's available because I think that that's really important when you're doing um, portraits is to be able to accurately represent yourself and your family. So I wanted to remember to share that with you guys today. Um, we love using these in our house whenever we're trying to color people and like I said, make sure that we have um, the right representation skin tones. So, no. Okay. These pipe cleaners is hair. I love that. What a fun 3D picture you can make. And then I have this like giant thing of wiggle eyes. So that's kind of the fun thing about having wiggle eyes is you get to pick the right size for your character. So let's see what, do you want to pick out the wiggle eyes for the dog? Uh -huh. Here, let me do a few more polka dots. And I want him to have a humongous hat. Okay. <laughs> you want to hear some other pet names that they've sent in? Yeah, totally. Let's do it. All right. So Nico has a dog named Finnegan. And Mary has a cat named Callie. And then Jacqueline has a dog named Penelope. These are some, like, Pet names I've never heard before. I know. I'm like, these are all really good names, you guys. Good work. I know, right? Maya has a dog named Trixie because when they open the door, she tries to trick them and escape. I love it when people have like stuff like that behind the names where it's like yes. the dog basically chose the name. We hear you. Yes. Cool. Um, Lizzie has a chinchilla named Toro. Chinchilla. They're super fluffy. We'll look a picture up later. That's They're pretty. really soft. Yes. Are very soft. Oh, we've got hamster, a hamster named Sweetie, a cat named Nutella. Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I named one like named like a latte or something. Like name it after your favorite things. Yes. And you know what? I'm giving Navy eyelashes because she's a girl, but her name is Navy, and I feel like she's earned them. Mm -hmm. So we gave Navy some eyelashes. I like it. Kathleen has a dog named Yogurt. I feel like there's a story. Yeah, right? <laughs> that one. <laughs> All right. There's a story about Snoopy and the dog. That's right. Okay, so here's Navy. We gave her some eyelashes and a big old wiggle eye. And she'll <laughs> go in this frame in just a minute. And then Bellamy drew herself and her brother, Bellamy and Bo. And of course, they're wearing rainbow clothing because that is how we see the world over here. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and um, take our portraits and assemble our frames. I hope you guys are still doing well out there. Would love to hear what you ended up drawing. If you did a self portrait, I love that idea. My phone is actually being used for one of our cameras, but I like to turn my phone on selfie mode, take a quick picture and use that to reference for my drawing if I don't have a mirror nearby. Um, so that's actually the reason we didn't do self portraits today because we didn't have a mirror nearby. So we just did portraits of loved ones. So Bellamy knows what she looks like over here. There we go. And knows what her brother looks like. So she did it based off memory. And then of course, this is a kind of a cartoon caricature of our sweet dog, Navy. So like I said, we're gonna assemble these real quick. I'm gonna do it for you, okay? Yes, please. So, once you turn your frame. Okay, pop it in. Hold on one second, please. Pop your frame over. And then one thing I like to do, can you get the heart paper? underneath there. I like to put the original backer behind my artwork just to help it um, be just okay. a little bit more sturdy. The other thing that you can do before you put in um, is write your name and the year or the date on the back of your picture. So Bellamy autographed the front of hers, but I'm going to go ahead and write today's date. So for anyone who's not sure what the day is, it's July 18th, 2020. She wrote her name on the front. So um, I always like doing that with kids, especially it's fun for them to go back and see their handwriting and how it changes. And then you also know how old they were when they did the um, artwork. So we're sitting in my playroom and we have um, the kids artwork on the walls and they do some of it at their preschool or some of it at home whenever we're just having craft time as a family. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I love to do that so that I can keep record of when we made things. You're using our frames. You'll notice there's a little hole in the back and your um, frame came with a wooden dowel and that is just a simple way to help you stand it up. This is still a little wet, so I'm gonna handle it for Bellamy for now. And there is her picture. 
Bo's so colorful. Be, Bo's gonna love it. Yes, Bo, her brother, is going to love it. Okay. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to finish up mine. One second, you guys. Let me There's lift actually, this over. Thank you. Can I have the piece of paper helper? Yes, <laughs> All right. Just cleaning up. I got a little bit of paint on the inside. I'm not sure how well you can see. Um, but I did, this happened to me this morning too. So what I did was just grab a tissue and try to lift some of that paint off so it doesn't get all over my picture. So just a tissue picks up a little bit of that excess paint that made its way onto the inside. Luckily, the wood soaks up a good bit of it. Okay, can I have the piece of paper? All right, thank you. I love, I love that response. Okay. All right, friends. Let me know how you're doing, if you're done, if you made a portrait of yourself, family member, friend, if you drew your favorite flower, your favorite zoo animal, a lot of options today. Mm -hmm. And then here is our second dog portrait. What do you guys think? Was this fun? Well, we can make more. All right, everyone. Um, if you wanna come back to the front facing camera, I just wanna say thank you all so much for joining us today for our Saturday Kids Club Online. Please feel free to photograph what you did today. And what do we tell them to do, Bellamy? Make it with Michael. <laughs> Hashtag make it with Michael. So post with us on social media, show us your craft. And then please, please, Sign up for another class. We have tons of programming happening for the next couple of weeks. Um, every single day, three o'clock central, Bellamy and I'll be back on the next couple of Mondays to make a monster necklace with you and a backpack chain. We're really looking forward to helping you guys um, have some summer fun or get ready, get ready for back to school, whatever works best for you. And we hope you have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next time. Unless there's anything out there, Raina, tell me if I'm missing anyone or anything before we sign off for the day. I don't think so. They're all saying they're they're done. They had a great time. Um, we're still getting some pet names, which are off the charts. It's, they're so creative. I love the pet names. You know what, um, you guys? If you sign up for Monday's class, then you can do a fake monster name. And we'll put those in the chat on Monday because we are making monster pom-pom necklaces. So that will be fun. And Bellamy and I will try to come up with our own monster names to share with you. How's that sound? Fun? Love yeah. it. Bye. All right. Make it with Michael. Make it with Michael. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks again.